The following is a production of the University of Minnesota. Hi, I'm Lori McGinnis, Director of the Center for Transportation Studies at the University of Minnesota. It's that time of year again. We've brought you together to share our stories of successful innovation from the past year. The innovation process is a complex one. It's rarely a straight line from when a piece of new knowledge is created to when it's moved into practice. But at CTS, we've been able to be so successful at putting innovative ideas to work, largely because of our partnerships. Thank you to all of you. Now, let's hear about some of those successful stories where CTS fueled transportation innovation to provide real world solutions. Well, I've been involved with the Center for Transportation Studies in many different areas from research to education and trying to develop our, our future workforce. The, the research component has just been incredible. We've seen some benefits from it on our county system. And these are real, res these are research projects that are really helping counties and cities. When I, when I talk with colleagues in other states, they're envious of what we have in Minnesota. The relationships we have between county engineers, state engineers, U of M researchers, uh, the private sector. Uh, the Center for Transportation Studies helps us get that, spread that word, that outreach to everybody. Here's what's working, here's what's not working, and we all benefit from that. Since teenagers are overrepresented among, uh, among drivers who die in fatal crashes, uh, we've decided to focus on that particular driver population. What we've done is take advantage of the very cell phone that has been a problem as far as distractions are concerned and use that device as a means of communicating to the teenager what the, uh, what the local speed limits are. And if they don't pay attention, uh, and they keep speeding, uh, we basically warn them that we're going to text message their parents. We don't just do the science, we do the engineering, we do the evaluation, and we do deployment. And there are not too many universities that actually take, uh, take the device, the concept, and deploy it on the road, in the vehicle, and evaluate it. And that's rather unique about our particular environment here. Cyclopath is a route finding system for bicyclists. Um, so if you want to see what bicycle trails are available in the Twin Cities metro area, you can come to Cyclopath. The real hallmarks of Cyclopath are personalized routing. We will create a route for you that matches your preferences based on what you've told us about what you like and dislike. And then a geographic wiki. The end users can supply a bunch of knowledge about bicycling, including editing the map itself. The Center for Transportation Studies has funded us to add what's called multimodal routing capabilities. This means we can generate routes, if the user wants them, that combine bicycling and public transit. We've had many hundreds of people contribute to Cyclopath, as well as certainly thousands of people who've requested routes from Cyclopath. What we see happening on these roadsides that don't have salt on our grasses is public agencies are continually spending money to, re, to redo their initial project. And that's where um, there could not only some environmental benefits, but also quite a, bit, quite a bit of money can be saved by some of these municipalities, local governments. What we decided we could do is to test a wide variety of grasses on roadsides in Minnesota and see which ones really were salt tolerant. So we're already getting results that are being utilized by sod growers.
agencies are cutting back, you know, there's cutbacks in all our budgets. And to get people to go to training is really expensive. And so if we can um, send the training to them, I think it's going to be really helpful. I think most agencies would have computers for people to um, be able to sit down and, and take this um, online program. We developed uh, a game, Distraction Dodger, uh, which was an attempt to get kids to sort of understand that they have to concentrate, they have to pay attention to what's on the road in front of them. So there's a whole variety of goals uh, that the driver uh, is trying to uh, achieve, to attain. And at the same time, they have to navigate on the street, they have to make their way to customers uh, in this little city. And after every level of the game, there's some data collected about their behavior, and that data is presented back to the team playing the game. My research uh, focused on the impact of land use planning and transportation planning on public health and social equity issues. We conducted this project and uh, did a survey of uh, uh, neighborhood residents who live near um, four uh, different transit corridors in the Twin Cities. Uh, we find a significant variation in population groups when it comes to perceptions of the impact of transit corridors on their neighborhood. Uh, the African-American residents who live near transit uh, corridors uh, actually have a positive views about the transit investment in their neighborhood. I think uh, largely because uh, that uh, uh, a majority of them actually are already transit users. The um, mileage-based user fee group, that was again about a, uh, two dozen people from across the state of Minnesota and uh, some elected officials, uh, some former elected officials, and then people from industry. And we were tasked with looking at whether there uh, could be at some future time uh, uh, the use of a mileage-based user fee in Minnesota as a supplement to or replacement for the gas tax. And so we went through um, a fairly exhaustive, I'd say six month process of, of looking at all the issues that are uh, peculiar to uh, mileage-based user fees and came up with some recommendations for the Commissioner of Transportation. We want to be among the leaders that are promoting and facilitating and advancing international collaboration. The World Society of Transportation and Land Use Research that is one of the ways where we've brought together a community that wasn't coming together before. We make it a, a key objective of all these convenings to be factual, to get information out, to get knowledge out, and to have a, a rich, full discussion about all sides of an issue. That is really valuable and I think very satisfying when we are able to do that successfully. We've got the expertise of, of a researcher and an expert at the university as well as the, the practical understanding of a problem from our practitioners and users out in the field. And CTS is unique in how we bring those people together and that's how we contribute in, in great ways to the innovation process.